just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Norbert Niederkofler, and I'm from the northern part of uh, Italy, from the Dolomites. And I was born there, then I left that beautiful area for a couple of years, so it was exactly almost, almost 20 years. And then I came back for, for, doing, for creating a project there. So I started with a restaurant in 1994, which is a long, long time ago. And at that time, the restaurant was a pizzeria. And for me, the goal was to go to three stars and to do it in a different way. And so in uh, 2000, we got the first Michelin star. Then we went down, and uh, in that time, I was still traveling every year to New York. I was traveling around the world, and I was bringing everything what, uh, what, what, what was important in food-wise, what was important in new ideas, in new thinking, in new food thinking, and brought it to the Dolomites. And, uh, and in 2008, we got the uh, first restaurant in the northern part of Italy, especially in the mountains, two Michelin stars, but with a completely different concept. So we were flying in everything what you could find in the world. So we were, we were flying in. We were flying out tuna to Tokyo and then flying the tuna back into to Italy. We were doing 90% foie gras every night in the, in the menu. And uh, it had nothing to do with the mountains, with where we are, where we're situated, and uh, it had nothing to do with the philosophy there. So I was not happy anymore. And I said, uh, what can I do now? And... Uh, so I started to talk with the guests. I said, hey, listen, why are you coming here? Because then really we started to have international guests. We had guests from Singapore, from Tokyo, from New York, from everybody in the world. They said, well, it doesn't make any sense that I do the food what you have anyway in your cities. And maybe you have it much better than we have it. Or we can do it. So I realized and I started to write Cook the Mountain. This was uh, 2008. And uh, Cook the Mountain, in the beginning, was just, you know, we start to write. We start to think about it. And then we start to set up rules. And we had really strict rules. And especially, I was working always with a young team. And the rules were very... So I said, this is the playground. We are not using olive oil. We are not using citrus. We are not using any greenhouses. And we are... Absolutely no waste concept. So it was quite a challenge. And it, uh, it took us... The final idea was really to create a local uh, circular economy. So to really to get the farmers on board, to get uh, the gastronomy on board, to get uh, nature on board, because it was the most important thing. And really to, to, really to create something new. It was, sounds very easy. But it's very difficult because you have to think in a completely different way. You have to really throw away a lot of things what you learned, throw away a lot of things what you, what you, what you, uh, what you were used to do, and you were had to take away the phone because it doesn't work. Because you cannot call a farmer. I need now, and he starts to laugh. Yes, now in one year. So this is the biggest problem. So that's why you have to, to rethink the whole story and uh, to really to redo everything what, uh, what we had to do and what we, what we thought until that day because every, everything was normal. You, know? you had uh, fruits around the year, you have bananas around the year, you have uh, pineapple around the year, you have uh, every product, every, everything there, always there. And it was uh, really the way to think about it. So for me, the biggest work was network. So we had to sit down with the farmers. We had to talk. Then we asked them, and we said, hey, listen, we need this, 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 and this. First answer was always, yes, but. Yes, but what? We cannot do. OK, OK, let's talk about it. Yes, the price is too high. I didn't ask for the price. You have to give me the product, and then I see how I can sell it. So this is my problem. It's not your problem. And so then we said, you know, we need this piece, this piece, and this piece. He said, no, what I'm going to do with the rest? So we had to rethink the whole thing. So it took me around five years to build up the supply chain and to make people understand what we want to do and why we want to do it and where we want to go. So this is uh, it's, it's very challenging. And as I said, you have, you have always to have in your mind, it takes always one year, always one year, always one year. So what you grow today, it's coming back next year. 
So this was one of the biggest issues. So now today, we are working something between 30 farmers directly, so no middlemen. We order directly, we pay directly. So they got even the higher price. And we always said to them, hey, listen, I don't want that you work just for me. We have other clients who's maybe with the restaurant can happen some, something. We saw what could happen because someone took off the block for the whole world and so all the restaurants were closed. And so that's why it was always very important that they have their, <clears throat> their own economy and we are one part of the economy. We are not the big part of the economy, but we are one part of the economy. So if we are not there anymore, they can go on, they can survive, and especially they can respect nature. Because for me, we are always talking about sustainability. What is sustainability? Sustainability is nothing else than respect. And it was always like this. It was always like this. Today, everything is sustainable. Everything... We try always to, to go, I was with my, with, my, with my bank account the other day, I said, hey, listen, also the bank credits are sustainable now. I don't know why. I have to pay it. So it's, I mean, it's still there. And so that's why, you know, we have, we have and uh, I really, I was born in the mountains and I was raised in the mountains. And in the mountains, there's very clear rules. If you work in summertime, you do something in summertime, you eat in wintertime. So this is very simple. And so that's why all the things, what, what we see in the mountains, that's why we are never talking about zero kilometer because it doesn't work for me. We are talking about mountain culture. I mean, Bogota is on 2,600 meters. You have rules. We have rules which nature dictates. We have, we have a very good friend of mine, Virgilio Martinez, with a beautiful project here in, in, in Peru on Milcientro. It's nature gives the rules. So we had to learn to go out in the nature to see how nature presents us the project, to see delicate product needs a delicate way of cooking. So then the techniques come in. Tough products needs a tough product. Uh, they need a tough way of cooking. So this is, this is very, very simple. And then in the end of the day, we learned that we are probably one of the last thing in this chain to bring up the, the food on the plate. <clears throat> but it's very interesting, and so we had to learn a lot of things. So also with, uh, with meat, this is one part. When I was a kid, we never had, we had meat twice per week. We had meat on Sunday, Sunday for lunch, and during the week, we had the meat which was left over from Sunday. That was it. So we talk today, we eat too much meat, we eat too much this, we eat too much this, we eat too much this. So I think the old saying, you are what you eat, today means more than ever, because we never had so many allergies, we had never so many intolerances like today, but it comes a lot from the food. We use, for the, the, our respect for the animals, is we use everything. We use nose to tail. So that's why in a three mission style restaurant, we had to learn how to write the menu in a new way, because now we serve every main course in two courses. We serve always one prestigious part, and then a not prestigious part. But with the not prestigious part, the problem is you have to know how to cook. This is the problem, because then you have to know all the techniques, you have to know all the things what, what you need. We took up the menu eight years ago, all the sous vide cooking. First, we, we did it because we couldn't find plastic bags which were recyclable. You can find them to use them in a cold way, but you cannot find them to use them in a warm way. And so this is a problem. And for us, it was a problem, but now we are very happy. So we, we, we learned so many things by doing. So it was, we were doing things, and then we said, no, we don't, we don't want to do this anymore. And so this was uh, the reason why we took everything off. So today, everything what we serve in the restaurant is cooked on open fire. Again, there, you have to know how to cook. Because you have to, to go with the hand in the fire, you have to feel the fire, you have to feel the heat, you have to feel it. It's nature. And this is very important. And also, you know, when you see the animals, so we do sausages, we do uh, seasoning, we do everything in, 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 in how it was done in the old days. So it's nothing new. Big, big problem for us was uh, products. We had to learn 
to think in biodiversity. Today, we use something between four to 500 different types of vegetables, wild herbs, mushrooms, berries, and roots. So we had to really to relearn to work with those things. In the book, what we did, Cook the Mountain, the nature around you, because this is very important. We were, we were talking long, long time about how is the title, how is it going to be the title of the book? Is it going to be Cook the Mountain? Or is it going to be the nature around you? Because the nature around you is very, very important. Because when you respect nature around you, you respect traditions and you respect culture. We had to learn how to preserve things. Because you know, the problem is when you work with farmers, first of all, you have to work in altitude and you have to work in latitude. Altitude, because when you are on 2,600 meters over the sea level, nature sleeps for a couple of months. And in our area, it was the same. So in 1,600 meters where we had the restaurant, nature in May, April, May, there was nothing there. So we had to go to lower parts where nature starts two months before. Different latitudes, because when you have everything growing on one place and you catch a big hail, you are running out of products. So that's why you have to really to work in all different systems. It's, it's a very, very complex system. And the biggest problem is, first of all, you never know what nature gives you, how much nature gives you, and when nature gives you. So you have to be very flexible. You have to learn how to store the products. So because today maybe you got five kilos of mushrooms, next day you got 50 kilos of mushrooms. You cannot say to the farmer, hey, listen, we, 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 need, we need it next week. Well, yeah, then I have to throw it away. So that's why we had to learn all those techniques and all the different ways. We had to learn how to deal without, uh, without, without citrus. So, you know, to keep in balance dishes, it's like yin and yang. Sweet, sour, crunchy, soft, fatty, something which cleans the palate. So it's, very, very, it's, it's always a, a very simple story, but it's a very complex story. So we had to learn to work without uh, citrus. So we were thinking, or we were trying first with wine, white wine, but then you have always the taste of the alcohol, and a lot of people, they don't like wine. We were trying to work with uh, uh, vinegar. Vinegar is too strong, so we had to learn to use fermentation. With fermentation, you can produce acidity as much as you want. You can produce acidity, you can produce uh, vitamin C as much as you want. The only problem is fermentation in Italy is absolutely great zone. There's no rules. So that's why you have to go, you have to learn, you have to teach, and you have really to, to bring in things, but today we can produce acidity as much as we want. And the fun thing is it works much better with the wine because the acidity is completely different because the acidity stops in, in your mouth and goes, doesn't go down. So also with the wine, to pair it with the wine, it's much easier. So there's a lot of things going on. We started to do soya sauce because we love soya sauce. But we do it with mountain lentils. The same procedure as with this. Uh, yeah. in, in, in Asia, they do it with, uh, with soya. We do it with mountain lentils. It takes the same time. And it's, it's not the same product, but it's uh, quite, uh, quite similar. We do barbecue sauce. But we are not using any ketchup. We are not using any, any alcohol. So we do just with fresh fruits, fermented fruits, and dried fruits. And so you get the barbecue sauce, which is amazing. We do a tomato ketchup made out of fermented plums. And the fun thing is, with, do you know how much sugar is in one kilo of, of ketchup when you buy it? You know? What do you think? It's three, four, five hundred grams, one kilo. One kilo sugar. <laughs> It's three to 500 grams of, uh, of sugar in there, in one kilo of tomato ketchup. We do the fermented plums ketchup with two grams of salt to start the fermentation. So also when you think ahead, you know, when you think in the future, it's, 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 it's very interesting. We were asking or we were talking before about the future of food. So the future of food for me, fine dining will always exist. Because people, there will always be people who love to go to fine dinings. But it's not the most important thing. 
then in countries like in Italy, like in Asia, right, you have a lot of street food, which is amazing. But, you know, like in Europe, we have a lot of uh, businesses that are running out of business because the grandma, is, the grandpa is not there anymore, grandma is not there anymore, so they're running out of business and they're not doing any calculation. So in the end of the day, which is le what is left over? We will have a big, big impact of convenience. But convenience is nothing bad. It has not, but we have to think about it because also then we have to, to work them in a different way and we have to have work, work them also on, on, on different levels. Because our kids in the kindergarten, they will eat convenience. School convenience, university convenience, mensa convenience. So we really have to think about the, feud, the future of the food. Because you know, you are what you eat. It's still there. It's still the same thing. And uh, maybe today we think it's a little bit different because we were talking before, you know, maybe you young people, you don't think about it because you have 20 years, so you don't care about what you eat. It's just as long as it's just fun. You know, when you have the measure here, when uh, this is your life and you come over here. So it's just uh, the last small part left and you start to think about maybe this is not a good thing to do. Maybe, mm, maybe I should drink a glass of wine less. Maybe I should try to eat a little bit healthier. You know? So then you start to think in a completely different way. But I think we should turn it the other way around. We should go in the kindergarten and educate the kids. And the kids educate the adults, because this is much easier. Because, you know, when, when your kid comes home from the school and says, hey, hey, daddy, it doesn't work what we are saying, you know, then you have a problem, because then you have a real problem. And when, when, especially when you know that, uh, that what your son or your daughter says is true. So that's why, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. It's, it's very complex, but this is very fantastic. So we had to learn all those things, and it's, it's nothing else than tradition. And we were the first restaurant in the world to get three mission stars with a concept like this. And the biggest impact and the, what I'm really happy and what I'm really, what I was also surprised for Michelin to do something like that because before French uh, three mission star restaurants were usually run by 90% of with French products. In this way, you don't have to do it. But we showed young people that you can go in cities, that you can go outside of cities and keep your culture, maintain your culture, and work it, and do it, and go up to three stars. So this is a very, very important message. So all what, what, what I was doing, I'm doing it always with a young team. So the average age in my team here is 25 years. And I, I really love it. I really love to work with young people because sometimes we think maybe too complicated. They got a completely different approach. And maybe sometimes they, they don't even care about rules. They don't care about the old rules. They, are, they don't care about, about what was done before. And so this is very interesting for me, and this is very, very helpful also sometimes for, the, for, the, for, the, for what we are doing. And so what we are doing today is really, in the new restaurant, what we, what we built, it, uh, what we opened up in, in, in July, this is going to be a think tank for young people. This is going to be a laboratory. This is going to be where we train young people. So we have young people now there. One is 23 years old. He's one of the best chefs I ever met. He's much, much better than I am. And this is what I like, you know, the combination with them to, to see new ways, to see new thinkings. And this is what, uh, what, is, uh, what is really interesting. What has all this to do with the future of the cities? Maybe be, when we start or when you start, because it's your job, I'm just a chef, when you start to think about new cities, maybe let's try to incorporate things like this. Maybe we, should, we, we, should, we have to think in a different way. Maybe we have to bring more nature in there. Maybe we have to bring more food culture in there. Maybe we have to bring more really new ways of thinking in, 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 the, in the cities. We are always talking about new, great, bigger, taller, faster, this, this. But I think sometimes we forget the people. And I think this is a very important way because the, the way of living. I became a chef not because of the food, because of the room. Because in a kitchen in the old days, the kitchen was always the biggest room in the house. There were the most people. It was warm. And you had food. And you were sitting on a table and you were talking. And this is, I think, this is what we have to do in the future. 
from my opinion side. So that's why we created a really, I, had to, I have to say this. It's funny because I created a kitchen and I said to the architect, you build a house around. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is really fantastic. And so this is what, uh, what I think for the future we should do. And really, I think this is going to be the future. And so thank you very much. I hope you had some fun. And it's some ideas for the... Oh,